Okay, so the first stage is to open up the Simulink package. This will open up this toolbar, so if you click on Blank Model, and it will open up this. So now go to Library Browser, and this contains all the blocks that you'll need within Simulink. So because we're going to initially simulate an open loop system, so what we've done is copied over two transfer functions. So one will be used to represent the actuator, another to represent the process. Copy over MUX because this allows us to compare the output of the system to the input applied to the system. So we're going to use a unit step input as the input for the system and then use the scope for us to see the output from the system. Okay, so connecting up the blocks and the components. So you can see it's relatively straightforward. And now if we feed back the input signal to the MUX so we can overlay the output and the input together on the same system and the same um, graphical output. So labeling the blocks um, for visual reasons, so input, output, actuator and process. We now wish to change the transfer function coefficients of the process. So in this case, we want the transfer function to be 4 over s squared plus 2 s plus 4. Click apply. And then you'll need to extend it if you want to visually see the values of the transfer function. Simulation time can be changed. This is changed from 10 seconds to 20 seconds. And then the simulation then is run. So double click on the scope and this will give you the graphical output. So you can see the unit step input, and then the system response in blue. So you see the zero steady state error at the moment. You might wish to put a label to the um, corresponding blocks, in this case the open loop system. So now we're going to um, simulate the open loop system, but we're going to subject this to a disturbance. So if you copy and paste the open loop system to save time, Relabel this, so just open loop system with disturbance. Extend um, the blocks because what we're going to do is add the disturbance between the actuator and the process. So break the um, line there and add in here a math op go to math operate and add in a subtract block here. Okay, we're going to put a negative disturbance in, into the system. Connect the blocks up. For the disturbance, we're going to model this using a step input. Okay, so double click on the step input, and you'll see the step time is at one second. The final value initially is one, so unit step input. Change that to 0 0.1 so that it's a step input. Double check that the step time is the same for the input, and also the final value is one as you expect, so a unit step input. Simulate the system. Okay, so now you can double click on the scope and look at the system response with the disturbance. So you notice now you've got steady state error to the system. So you've got a difference between the ref, sorry, the input and the output. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to model a um, feedback PID control system. Okay, so extend it slightly because um, we'll need to make room for the PID, the summing junction, and the feedback. So if you go to math operators, get the subtract block. We're going to go to continuous, get a PID control, the PID controller block. Connect all this up. So that's now the feed forward path constructed. Go to commonly used blocks. What we're going to add in here is a gain block with a value of one for an ideal sensor. Okay, we're also assuming ideal actuation in all of this work. So now connected up, so this is effectively the feedback loop that goes into the summing junction. So That's the finished PID feedback PID control system. What we might want to do is just 
just go back to the original one and just add on the label of disturbance. Okay, and then further label the components for the feedback PID control system. So the reference PID, actuator process, disturbance. Okay, what you'll notice is you can't use the same name twice. So use a name that hasn't been used before. So in this case, disturbance one. Sensor. Okay, so an ideal sensor. Okay, and then simulate for the 20 second time period again. Click on the output. And you'll notice there the PID control without it being tuned is working quite well. We've got it's eliminated state state error, but you've got quite a lot of oscillation on the response, quite a lot of overshoot. So if we double click on the PID block, click on this tab here for tune. What we can do is tune the PID control. There. So I'll open up this PID tuning um tuning toolbox. It might take a while. Well, you might want to do you might need to expand it. And then what you should get is these little scrolling tabs what enables you to make your system response faster or slower and it'll tune it'll it will give you corresponding PID values your portional integral derivative controller. You can also look at making the transient more aggressive or more, more robust. And you notice as you do that, the P, I, and D values change in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, so the control parameters. Once you've got what you like, click apply, come out of there, simulate again, double click on the scope, and you'll see your system response. So you'll see it's tuned it, it's got rid of the oscillation of the response. You've still, still got quite a sluggish. Um, Rise time, further investigation. So you might want to look into kind of the error responses and also the control input. So in this case here we're labeling this error. So error is just the measured or the output, take away the reference, and then the control input. So that's what actually is applied to the open loop system. Simulate that, double click on the error. And you'll see as as you kind of expect that the error is effectively the ref uh, sorry the output take away from the reference and then the control input you can see there you've got a sharp spike okay so final kind of investigation so let's have a look at changing the parameters or the coefficients of the transfer function so what you should notice is you can imagine what you should notice is changing your coefficients that your system you can output performance changes so if you double click on the scope you can see there and it's actually got a very nice response so let's do a further investigation to see if we can get something that's perhaps not so desirable so change the values to one for the enumerator four and one click apply simulate that click on the output and there you'll see your system response which is now has got a lot of oscillation and that concludes this video.